Welcome back, YouTube. We're gonna do a New York City icon today, but it's gonna be like the Brutus Bake Shop take. It is a, a pink and gold cookie. Do I have anything in my teeth? Welcome back, YouTube to another episode of Baking Outside the Lines with me, Lonnie Halliday. You guys have been giving me amazing feedback. This Brutus Bake Shop take on the very classic, iconic New York City bodega classic, the black and white cookie. It's like a bodega bakery classic. It's half black, half white. It's typically like a very big, fluffy, cakey cookie. You see them this big sometimes. It's got like some almond and some lemon zest and then it's uh, frosted half with chocolate and then half with vanilla top. My version actually is made with sweet potato in the place of eggs. Instead of black and white, I do a pink and gold because I'm low-key bougie like that. I love adding in the sweet potato. It speaks to my roots. My father is from the deep south. I grew up eating that kind of food and to me throwing the sweet potato in there for that lovely luscious sweet flavor is a really beautiful way to kind of pay homage to my roots. My mother is also from New York, so it's sort of this melding of like the baker in me, the southerner in me, and then the New Yorker in me all together. I adapted this one from Melissa Clark's New York Time recipe, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is sift together our dries in one bowl and then whisk together our wets in one bowl. And then we're gonna do the creaming method, but we're gonna kind of prepare. I've got my mise en place. As we all know, mise en place means everything in place. I've got my mixer, we'll put this off to the side. I'm just gonna give this a little sift to start. And then I've got my leaveners, baking powder, and baking soda, as well as some salt. And here, just give it a nice sift. I give it a little stir as well, because I definitely wanna make sure that all those leaveners are nice and incorporated. Set this to one side. I need another bowl. I'm gonna do basically the same thing with my wet ingredients. Some water and some coconut yogurt here. My vanilla. Break this up. This has been chilling, so the fat in it is like pretty solid. So I'm just gonna give it a little stab to get it going. And I'm also gonna add my lemon zest. So much of the lemony flavor, there's so many oils in the skin of the citrus. And when you zest it, you really get that like bright, punchy, lemony flavor in your baked good. Just gonna incorporate that. It's a lovely, bright, <laughs> pick-me-up flavor on this like dreary, dreary, dreary ass New York day. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cream together our butter and sugar. I've got four ounces of room temperature butter. Spin this butter for a little while. And add my sugar. You can see what it looks like when it is just getting started. It has yet to really start mixing. We're gonna see it lighten and we're gonna watch it get more voluminous as we go along. Start on low and then move up. It's all kind of starting to incorporate now. It's changing. Other bakers do not call this thing in the bottom of the halo, but I don't know where I picked that up. I think I picked it up from my chef at pastry school. Seems to make sense to me. Okay. The volume has significantly increased. It's almost like a sponge-like texture. You can see little like bubbles kind of. When you utilize the creaming method, the leavening comes from these little bubbles that are created when you're creaming the butter and the sugar together. And that's what's gonna help give us loft in this. Remember, it's a fluffy cookie. So this looks good. Right now is when I'm gonna add my sweet potato. That's one of my egg substitutes. And it's kind of gonna like fill up some of those bubbles and then the steam that's in the water in both the butter and the sweet potato when the batter hits the heat of the oven, it's gonna expand and give our cookie that like lovely spongy cakey loft. I'm kind of finishing it by hand because it is kind of a small volume inside of this big bowl. 
nice and even. That's mostly what we want and not to have knocked bubbles too much out of that. The original recipe calls for sort of alternatingly adding this like flour and this liquid. And the reality is, is this is a gluten-free recipe. So you can kind of just like bang it all in. We're not overworking any gluten. Actually, yeah, I'm just gonna put all my dries in and then I'm gonna put all my wets in. It's just gonna be like that. Literally just stirring it in on low. I'm gonna add all these wets in. This all goes. Just stirring. So this is pretty much it. The final color is this lovely pumpkin-y color. I'm good to go for getting this all trayed up and baked off. When we scoop our cookies, I got a nice little container of warm water here. We're just gonna like smooth the tops and like press it down a little bit so it bakes nice and evenly. I've lined my baking sheet with just a little piece of parchment paper here and I'm just gonna deposit it here. I'm gonna do six to a sheet tray because they need a little bit of space. They need about two or so inches on each side. So now that we've got them all lined up, all pretty like little soldiers on our tray, I'm just gonna dip my hands in this little tiny bit of warm water. I kind of just wanna get like my, the palm of my hand because I'm gonna use the shape of the palm of my hand. Honestly, it's like really not that serious. Me describing this is taking longer than this should take. I'm just gonna press and you can see I've kind of reduced the height by maybe like two thirds of the original height. What? Okay, that's kind of it. Into an oven. 375 if you have a standard oven. They bake in about 12 to 15 minutes and I like to rotate them about halfway through. Lego. Siri, set a timer for six minutes. Six minutes and counting. They don't look just like sugar cookies. Don't say that camera guy. They are lightly golden. They're still soft and a little bit yielding when I press them. While these cool, I'm gonna make the glaze and it's gonna be a sweet potato glaze. So we're gonna continue on the theme. Camera guy, can you get me that sifted confectioner sugar over there, please? Sifted confectioner sugar. It's a little uh, unsifted again, so I'm just gonna sift it a little bit more. If you like the videos that we've been doing, do please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know in the comments. Do you like these videos? What kind of videos do you wanna see? Should I stop doing baking videos altogether and switch to turboed Miata videos? You let me know. We'll talk about it. But right now I'm gonna just keep on with this video, so. Lego. I'm just gonna add in some of this sweet potato puree. And before I really start mixing, I'm gonna do a little splash of vanilla and a actual literal pinch, maybe two pinches, salt. All baked goods need salt, all baked goods need salt. This is also gonna get a little touch of pink food coloring. I like this one, neon bright pink. I'm gonna add a couple little. Oh yes, honey. The thing that's really fun about this is you can play with the color you want. A lot of times when I'm playing with color, I like to add white food coloring because watch what it does to this color. It really just makes everything sort of pop. And you can really play with different shades and tones. This is a little thin. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more confectioner sugar and then these are, this is gonna be ready to glaze. When you start in the center, it helps it not floof out and then you can kind of like scrape down. When you're trying to find the balance between like the liquid that you're adding in and the confectioner sugar, it's a lot easier to start thicker and just thin it out slightly then try to get the balance right by adding confectioner sugar because you just have to use so much sugar to correct for something when it's a little too wet. It's much better to like work with something a little on the thicker side and then try to thin it out little by little with some liquid. I'm gonna add a little more pink because I just want it to pop. Boink. 
Some people freak out about food coloring. To those people, I say, I do not care. <laughs> and if you don't like it, maybe you should start your own YouTube channel called I Hate Food Coloring. How about that? I am loving where this glazes and I'm ready to glaze my pink and gold cookies. We're gonna try a couple techniques because there's a couple ways you can glaze. You can kind of like try to dip it, see how that goes for you. These are still like ever so slightly warm, which is good for glazing things. The glaze sticks to them much easier. And then I'm gonna use my finger. You can use a tool. I use an offset spatula or I, I can use a piping bag for this. There's a lot of professional ways. We're doing like home baking. I'm using this like drizzle method. I'm kind of using my finger to push it out to the side. You don't want it too thick. This is a sugar glaze, remember? I'm gonna switch to a tool cause you know, I am a Toad's Profesh baker and I'm gonna use a tool. I've got this small offset spatula. Food 52 actually sent me this. Offsets are supposed to be like an extension of your finger. You see my fingers there sitting in this, the offset little angle here. And then it's just like, I've got an extra long finger. So I get a little blob there, clear off the excess. And you kind of have to work with the texture. This is a little bit of a nicer technique if you want to leave an edge. In the comments, if you want to see that, if you want to see like what tools I recommend, any basic ingredients so that you can sort of like bake anything anytime, that seems like a video. If you want that, leave it in the comments. I'll get you all set up for baking success. So yes, this is all pink to start the base, but you're gonna see my genius in un momento. So I'm just gonna give these a few minutes to dry and then we're gonna do our gold. So this stuff is metallic gold powder. And the way that I make these pink and gold cookies is I make a gold paint and then I paint half of it gold. You can use any sort of like alcohol. You can use vodka or Everclear, which really works great. If you're in a pinch, you can use vanilla. Vanilla works great for this. I've put about a half a teaspoon in the bottom of this container, this gold powder. I'm gonna fill this cap up about like halfway because I can always add more. Immediately, it makes this beautiful like gold liquid gold. And I'm just gonna pour about half of that in there. I'm just gonna kind of mix that in there. I'm going for almost like a thin paste. I like this color. I'm gonna go right down the middle. This is just my sort of stamp on like a New York classic. I mean, this is just my sort of homage to, if you will. I'm gonna paint the rest of these cookies and that's basically it. That's like the Brutus Bake Shop pink and gold cookie. If you liked this recipe, if you wanna see more like fine detail stuff, you can comment that below. Let me know what's working for you. Let me know if you love New York too. And that's kind of it. Uh, yeah, thank you.